And uh, so, like I said, my name is Stephen Neal. I started wrestling in ninth grade. I played JV football. I don't, my, my wrestling coach in college was real bad. I don't trust you on the hype side. <laughs> uh, I played JV football in high school, and I thought, man, I'm going to play pro someday. I, I was probably five foot nine, 140 pounds, so I wasn't a very big guy at that point. And uh, some kid in my class, his name was Ross, he said, hey, why don't you come out for wrestling? Because football just got nice. You know, it's way tougher than football. And I said, no way, no way. Yeah, he said, no way, there's no way it's tougher. So I showed up in the wrestling, the wrestling room, and I, I got beat up pretty good. But I was, I was real uh, stubborn, had a lot of pride. So I kept telling him, oh, man, this is nothing. This is nothing. Football is way harder. And then got through a week, and then another week. And I was beat down, but I was still lying to him. I said, no, there's no way. Football is way harder. And I, I mean, I'm getting, I was the worst guy in the room. I was getting beat up every day. Actually, my, my dad bought me a pair of wrestling shoes. I lost them at school. It was just a rough experience. Getting pinned. Anyone like getting pinned? <laughs> Not me. I hate it. And I was getting pinned a lot. I was ready to quit. And uh, I just kept going because I didn't want to get the, Ross the satisfaction that wrestling was tougher than football. So I stuck with it, stuck with it, stuck with it. Finally, at the end of the year, we had a little banquet for the wrestling team. And I got this little paperweight that said Steve Neal most improved. And I was like, man, that's pretty cool. So I was like, okay, I can finally admit to Ross. This is the toughest thing I've ever done in the sport of wrestling. And so he ended up leaving, going to another school, and I was ready to quit wrestling. I'm like, I proved, I proved, you know, I proved my point. I'm gonna go out for basketball. My dad played basketball. And so I was ready, ready to quit. And my dad said, hey, are you gonna go to wrestling this year? I said, no, nah, I, I hate the feeling of getting pinned. There's nothing like it. You're sitting there, you know, something's nasty, smelly, there are armpits in your mouth. That's nasty, you know? And I said, Dad, I don't like getting pinned. He's like, well, why don't you just start pinning people instead? And it hadn't occurred to me <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. You know, wrestling's not that complicated of a sport. You got a single leg, a double leg, a high crotch, headlock, you know? So I'm like, okay, sounds good. Well, how do I do that, you know? So I, I started going to freestyle and to Greco. And like I told you before, he's my coach. And he didn't know anything because he's a basketball player. Uh, but, but we went there and we talked to other coaches and, and and he, my dad would say, show, can you show my son a move? He doesn't know what he's doing. So he showed me a gut wrench or leg lace is way too out of my, out of my, out of my leg. So I tried to do a crotch lift or something. But um, So I, I kept learning, kept working harder and harder. And by my sophomore year, I'd gotten, or my junior year, I'd gotten decent. So I wasn't getting pinned on time. I was doing a lot more pinning. I uh, qualified for the state meet. And I ended up, uh, I was a match away from place. In California, they have one state tournament. And I was a match away. So I was in the top 12. They placed eighth there. And the next year I made it my goal, I was going to get a bracket sheet at every tournament. So what does that mean? Win. Win every tournament. But in California, the top four get a bracket sheet. Mm. So I was sitting there, I'm in the semis against a guy that was a lot better technician than I was. His name was Casey Strand. He's an All-American for uh, Arizona State. And he was, he won as a sophomore, junior, his senior year. And like I said, I was just uh, trying to grab legs and fight. And so I end up, I wrestle him, he takes me down eight times, and I lose 16 to seven because he let me up seven times. And <laughs> he kept hitting a low single, I'd never seen it before. I'm like, what's this guy doing? But, um, so he beat me. I, I go into uh, the Constellation Semis for fifth to six. I'm losing to the guy, and I'm thinking, man, what was my goal? My, my goal was? Get, get a bracket sheet for every tournament. I, I was undefeated all year, so I, I accomplished that so far. So I had to beat this guy. I come from behind, I pin him. I was down like six or seven. And I'm wrestling for third and fourth. And right away, the guy uh, headbutts me, ankle picks me, cradles me, I'm down. And I'm like, I got to fight. So I'm fighting, I'm fighting, I'm fighting. I lose, and I'm upset. But we go to the podium. I took fourth place, and I still got the bracket sheet. So I was satisfied, right? Because I accomplished my goal. And then I started thinking, it's like, man, if I would have said I want to be a state champ, maybe I could have taken third. Maybe I could have taken a second. Maybe I could have won the whole thing. And so right then and there, I decided from now on, I'm going to try to win every tournament I go to, whether it's the US Open and I'm 10 years old. It doesn't matter. I just I, I expect to win everything. I expect to succeed at everything. And when you, when you have that kind of passion and that kind of desire, you know what else happens? You start working a lot harder. Because and, and, you can't just say, I want to I make it up to the roof and never, take, never climb a ladder. You have to 
put the work in. You set a goal that high, you have to work hard because you really want to achieve it if you're really passionate about that. So I started working hard. I qualified for the junior national team my senior year. And like I said, I took fourth in high school state at 189. I went back to junior nationals. And at 220 pounds, I won junior nationals. And I was all pumped up and excited. And I, I said, you know, from now on, I'm just going to start setting my goal to win every tournament. And so I got to college, really excited. I thought I was pretty good. Like I said, I just won junior nationals with that terrible double leg like this. And I get to college, and I'm getting my butt kicked, and I'm frustrated, but I just kept working harder and harder and harder. And my first year, I lost a few times, but like I said, I, I was going to win the national championship in my mind. I was ranked 12th or something. I lose, but I kept fighting. I could have just been eliminated in the quarterfinals, lost the next one, and been done. Actually, the only thing I was in the quarter, quarterfinals, that was the match out. And uh, I just kept fighting, kept fighting. I ended up taking fourth place in the country in the NCAA tournament two years after I took fourth place in the high school state. And I think it's because I started setting my goals higher and higher. Did I accomplish it? No. Did my failure? Kind of. But fourth place in this blade is pretty cool. Don't you guys think? So I always tell people, you know, you set, your, set your goal all the way up there. Shoot for the stars because you never know. You might just land on the moon. That's pretty cool too. And, and later, later uh, the next year, my sophomore year, I worked hard. Worked hard. A lot of people said I got lucky to take fourth. I ended up in the finals against McCoy. I took second. Um, then the next two years, I, I made it to the finals. I was undefeated. I won it the next two years. The same year, my senior year, I qualified at the U.S. Open to compete at the World Championships. I went in there. I was like, man, America's the greatest country in the world. I got nothing to lose. We're supposed to win. Went out there. was able to, to win. And then, uh, once again, I, I, I came up to some failures. I, I, I didn't make the Olympic team. I was supposed to be the, the favorite for the gold medal. Darn Sports Illustrated, they called me up. And, painted me gold and took pictures, all this crap, and I didn't even make the team, so it was kind of disappointing. But uh, after, after that loss, I, I stayed up all night, and, and, and guess what happened? You guys know what happens when you stay up all night? Yeah, you get tired. You get tired, but the sun comes up, because it's the next, the, the next day. You can't dwell on the past, you just have to keep moving forward. And so I continued wrestling a little bit, but, but my, my goal was, was to play football. I didn't know how I was gonna do it, but that was my goal. Like I said, I set crazy goals. And uh, just so happens, I meet an agent. Next thing you know, I'm in a training camp with New England. Don't know what the heck I'm doing. I'm just running around out there. But they see the, the hard work, the desire. They kept me around. And uh, I made it for five weeks in training camp, not knowing what I was doing. And they finally called me and they said, hey, Steve, we love your work ethic, but you just don't know what you're doing. Uh, but we want you for next year. And you, have you guys all seen Hard Knocks? They say nice stuff to everybody when they cut them up. Pretty much. So I figured, oh, yeah, I'll probably not get a shot. But I kept believing, kept training. Uh, the next week, the Eagles picked me up on practice squad. I stayed with them for 12 weeks. The Patriots call me back. They say, hey, Steve, we want you back. And I was thinking to myself, man, the coaches up there are kind of mean. The ones down here in Philly are really nice. I don't want to stick around here for a little bit. My agent, who is here in Cleveland, Neil Cornrich, he says, Steve, you have to go back to the Patriots. It's, it's a smart thing to do. So I said, all right, I'll, I'll go back there. Next thing you know, it was about eight weeks later. I'm standing on the sidelines of the Super Bowl against the, the, the Rams. I wasn't suited up, but I was part of the team. And we won our first Super Bowl championship that year. And it was just the greatest turnaround and from a year. I was a failure. I didn't make the, the uh, world team, the Olympic team. And the next year, I'm sitting on the sidelines of the Super Bowl as a Super Bowl champ. Even though I never played it now, I still got a ring, which is pretty cool. <laughs> I had one more Dan Reno at that point. Anyways, I kept persevering. I had a lot of injuries. Kept getting with it. Finally broke through on the roster, and I was able to start and, and, and uh, play the entire season in 2004 when we won the Super Bowl against the uh, the Philadelphia Eagles. So I actually got to earn my own ring because as a wrestler, if, if, if you don't do it out there, you don't feel like like it's really yours. So uh, stuck with that and had a lot of injuries throughout my career. I just called it quits this last year. I had some shoulder issues, so I can't uh, use it how I'd like to. And uh, so here I am today, trying to talk to you guys and tell you, believe in yourself, set your goals high. Even if people don't believe in you, just don't let them bring you down. Believe in yourself, work hard, and good things can happen. So, you guys have any questions for me? <laughs> no? No questions though? Like a practice, like people like, like talk like us and stuff, they just be dirty? Uh -huh. Not really. Cause you gotta think, uh, 
everyone has a job to do, and it's pretty serious. You know, I mean, if you don't do your job, then uh, you're gonna get you're gonna get yelled at by the coaches. So everyone's sitting in your offensive line while you're sitting here, you're talking to your buddy here, your buddy there, making your calls. You're not really worried about what's going on. You know, they're trying to line up right. They're trying to get their defense right. So you don't really have time to chit chat until after the play. After the play, people are talking smack. But then during the play, you're sitting there. You're not really worrying about them. You're more worried about being on the same page with your, your teammates. And uh, that's one thing I'll tell you a little difference between wrestling and football. Everyone always asks, what you like better? And uh, I, I don't think they're really in the same league because wrestling is a one-on-one -on -one match to see who's the toughest guy in that circle. In football, you have 22 people out there that are being orchestrated by two different head coaches playing chess. And if the coach is smarter and the chess pieces do what they're supposed to do, the better coach wins. But in football, you have live chess pieces. Them guys can do whatever they want. They can say, screw you, coach. I want to make a play. And next thing you know, they give up a 75-yard touchdown because they thought they are going to make a play. So it's two different things. It's, it's total teamwork. And, and this is more of an individual a battle. And it's, they're both pretty cool and special to me. So no questions, really, guys? Like, like, oh. When did you start freestyle? I started freestyle after my sophomore year. I went to my first tournament, and uh, my dad bought me a bunch of singlets so that he could reverse. They don't have, we didn't have the nice ones. They were like the polyester ones back. Then. And I put it on, and it was blue, but the rest said, you're red, and he's blue. And I'm thinking, this is my first freestyle match. I'm thinking, okay, I didn't even know how to score it. You know? So I'm wrestling, and red's winning 6 to 5, and I'm like, Am I blue? Am I red? I don't know. So I'm sitting there and I end up losing 65. And I, I was like, yeah, I thought I was red. I mean, I know I'm wearing blue, but maybe it's different. Then the next one I got cut in the head and arm, I got touch fall. So that was a quick day. Then I started improving. So like I said, show up, you work hard, good things can happen. Another one back there? Another question? I was the right guard for the New England Patriots, number 61. So. And I like the whole people. <laughs> the what? You know what? When I first went there, uh, Tom Brady was a third string. He was fighting for third string and fourth string. And so I was so bad. I, the only people I could block for was Tom Brady and uh, Michael Bishop. Because they had Drew Bledsoe. He was a number one guy. And then you had Damon Heward. He was a number two guy. And so the only guys they'd let me block for were these two Slappies, the third and fourth string, because I was a slappy myself. So yeah, we kind of go back a long ways. And uh, like I said, he never gave up. He kept believing in himself. He kept fighting. He kept improving every day. And look where he is now. One of the greatest of all time. So that's a great story in itself right there. No questions about Giselle or anything? <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you make the Olympic team if you did so good in national? In 1999, I won the national tournament for the Open. Uh, I beat a guy by the name of Kerry McCoy in the semifinals. Uh, he was ranked number one. I was received number four. And then I beat Erickson, who was ranked number two. Then I beat him again in the trials and then um, went on wrestling for world championships. The Olympics started the next year. And so you go to the U.S. Open, which I, I lost to Kerry at the U.S. Open, three to two. And so I had to go and try to beat him at the trials. And he ended up, uh, he, he out-prepared me. He game-planned me. And he just, he just beat me. He had this great leg lace and twisted me up. I couldn't walk for about two weeks because I was fighting hard. But he was just, he prepared better and, and uh, taught me a valuable lesson. You, know, you have to not only train physically, but train mentally also. You, know, you have to be prepared for your opponent. So help me out, especially in the NFL. They, they do that every week. They train, they watch so much film to, to try to get the best advantage they can. No, my, my school didn't have a football team. So I went to Cal State Bakersfield, and this is about all I got from the school right there. <laughs> now, we're, we're a poor school, but uh, got a bunch of tough kids in there, and we're, we're fighting. So. Oh, Cal State. No, actually, Cal State Bakersfield, my freshman year, 1996, we took third in the country. It was Iowa, Iowa State, Cal State Bakersfield, Penn State, Nebraska. We took third. We were, pretty, we're still proud of that. And I think we were like top 10 in the four years I was there. So, pretty much tough guys. Sometimes that's all it takes. <laughs> Anything else? Nothing? About how much you can bench or something? It's not very much about that shoulder.
I haven't been in a long time. I really did push it. Oh, I think the most I ever put on there was like 410. Well, some of my teammates could do like 600 pounds. Like Vince Wilford, that guy. So strong. Like I said, I did a lot more holding than pushing. So. <laughs> Anything else? We good? All right, guys. Thanks for letting me come in here. And uh, You guys are starting on Friday? Yes. <clears throat> Best of luck, work hard, <clears throat> and uh, I just had a little church service, and they were talking about uh, people of integrity and character, and it's about what, people, what, what you do when people aren't looking, and I think that's so important about the sport of wrestling, too, you know? It doesn't matter what you do in practice, it matters what you do at home. You can just go home, eat junk food, eat all, all kinds of crap, and look like this, or you can go home and run, and, and do all kinds of extra training, and get in the best shape you can, and when you get in that greatest shape, you know what happens? You, you're so confident because you know what? There's nothing more I could have done. There's nothing more I could have done. So no matter what I do, I'm going out there. I'm giving my best effort. And so if you have that kind of attitude throughout the season, you're going to be you're going to be great. So uh, best of luck to you guys. And uh, yeah, kick some butt. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks.